Remake, welcome to Tech 3D. This is balls deep on the risk scale. As you know, I've got many contacts within Autodesk, and one of them has went above and beyond. He's given me access into Autodesk mainframes. And I've managed, for want of a better word, hack into them, and I've gained access to a bunch of sensitive documents. I've managed to retrieve one of them, and it's this one here, the Autodesk first quarter fiscal 2023 earnings. I've retrieved this document, and I'm going to lay it out bare as a Tech 3D exclusive. It's going to show you exactly how much money Autodesk have made, where they've made the money, and how they've made their money. This is exceptionally risky, but I think it's important information that we really need to expose on it. For God's sake, man, crying out loud. Hello? What? Your trouble. Mate, do you have any idea how hard it is to get people interested in this stuff on YouTube? I... Fine. My lawyer has asked me to clarify that everything I've said up until now is absolute bollocks. There's no Autodesk contact. I haven't hacked any mainframes. And in fact, the document is, <laughs> is public knowledge. And it's on their website. They publish them every quarter for everyone to look at. Uh, so, yeah. You happy? Oh yeah, how are you even watching this? I haven't even published it yet. Are you, are you even a real lawyer? You're a dick. You're, you're a, hello? Hello? Well, that was a minute and a half of my life. That didn't need to happen. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind. I need to keep myself entertained somehow. Right, I'm going to make this a quick one. Right, this is not for everyone. <laughs> this is Autodesk's fiscal earnings. Uh... Yeah, look, it's not it's not going to be up everyone's street, but I find this fascinating. There's some little nuggets, gems of information in here. Looking where you, the products that you use fit within Autodesk's overall strategy, not individually, but like the specialization and also demographics, geographies. I, f I find it quite interesting. It's not going to be for everyone, uh, but I'm not going to. This is not about beating on Autodesk. I don't want to. I can't stop people doing it, but I'm not going to engage with anyone who's just going to come out the woodwork and just whinge about the price of the products and how much Autodesk are making. I don't engage with that, never have done. I can't stop it, but I'm just not going to entertain it. I don't want to hear it, frankly. Right, first quarter fiscal 2023. So Autodesk's financial year is January, January. So this is FY23, Q1, 22. So they've, their total revenue is 1.17 billion in the first quarter of 2022 uh, and it is, it's in everyone's in, well it's in my interest to be fair for what has to do well they've sustained my career up to this point and they will probably for the rest of my career so it is in my interest for what has to do well so I'm absolutely fine with discussing this openly uh, I need them to do well to be honest uh, I'll criticize them when criticism is warranted but I need them to do well Right, so Q1 FY23, revenue mix by product family. This is the one I'm mostly interested in, this slide here. This is where I found the, the majority of the fascinating information. And um, these two pie charts, right. There's quite a few abbreviations that I'll break down. So AEC is architecture, engineering, construction. MFG is manufacturing. m and &E and other is media and entertainment and other products that don't fit within manufacturing or architecture. And you've got AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT which is obvious, right? The pie chart itself, this is Autodesk's entire revenue over Q1 2022, and it's split into each specialization. So for their entire revenue in Q1, AEC brought in $518 million of that 1.17 billion, which is probably not surprising given how much attention and focus Autodesk are putting on AEC, how many, how much acquisitions are going on, right? Cloud services, and how much focus is going into AEC. So that's anything to do with Revit, right? Civil 3D, the architectural engineering construction collection, uh, Autodesk build, Autodesk construction cloud, the Innovise, any, anything to do with water, water, any anything, construction and architectural, all gets plowed into that green pipe slice of the pie. And that's the overwhelming majority of Autodesk's revenue. But what I found absolutely fascinating and also really confusing is the red slice of the pie. AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT still makes up 30% of Autodesk's revenue. <laughs> How? That's just in Q1. I think over the year, it's still around 40%. I think when it bounces out over a year, $346 million. How? 
And this is not including people who use AutoCAD as part of a collection. So if you use AutoCAD out of a product design collection, you're not including, this is people who've explicitly went to Autodesk and subscribed, but you can use my link in the description as well if you want to, and have went and bought a subscribe to a license of just AutoCAD and just LT. How, who, who what? I, I, I know AutoCAD's relevant still in a lot of industries, but can someone please explain to me how it's up 21% from last year? There's, there's a specialized parametric modeler for every industry. There's been campaigns and promotions to get people off of AutoCAD onto these specialized tool sets. Uh, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, Civil 3D, all, all these dedicated modelers. How is AutoCAD growing in popularity? 21% <laughs> year on year, how's that happening? It, it could be the businesses currently using AutoCAD are growing, they're, they're expanding, that's good, that's a good thing. Maybe it's price rises, maybe it's, maybe it's a combination, but 21% year on year? That's staggering. But yeah, and, and what's even more surprising is AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT subscriptions absolutely dwarf the entire manufacturing business unit within Autodesk. MFG brings in $225 million in a quarter for Autodesk. That is all of Inventor subscriptions, product design collections, uh, Fusion 360, all the cam stuff, any anything to do with manufacturing combined. AutoCAD and LT dwarfs that <laughs> significantly. And that's only a 14% year on year. So if you're using Inventor and you're, you, you thought you were part of Autodesk's biggest revenue generation stream or generating stream, no, MFG is their third biggest generating uh, revenue stream. And that's behind AutoCAD, LT and AutoCAD. It's just, just mind blowing. Right, this one's quite surprising as well. m and &E and other, so media and entertainment and other. So this blue slice of the pie is 7% of Autodesk's entire revenue every quarter. That's 3D Studio Max, Maya, the m and &E collection, media and entertainment collection, Mudbox, Shot Grid, uh, all their rendering stuff, right? You know, Arnold. And other is stuff that doesn't fall within a specialization. The likes of Autodesk V-Red, automotive stuff, right? Alias, all that kind of stuff. That all gets plowed into this 81 million. So Max and Maya might only make up, I don't know, 50 million of that. What? What's staggering about this is that like, that's how Autodesk mostly promote themselves, right? You look at their show. Ah, I mean, they do sh they promote themselves a lot with the, you know, fancy architecture, building showreels and stuff. But generally, when they make their overall corporate showreel, there's a lot of 3D Studio Max and Maya, you know, customer montages in there. And it sort of gives off the image that Autodesk have a, have a massive uh, business weight with media and entertainment. It's a big part of their business. There's a lot of reliance on Max and Maya and VFX and stuff. And not at all, actually. It's a tiny, tiny part of their business. In fact, they could, they could probably shut down their entire M&E business on face value anyway, and it just wouldn't even register, right? Which is, I mean, it, it, that's that's probably unfair, actually, because in terms of products, real-time Max and Maya and the file format FBX and stuff, they, they couldn't just shut it down because there's a lot of interlinked product references and dependencies. That's a daft statement, but in terms of revenue, it's just, just it's, it's almost like not a blip. But uh, right, so regions and geographies. This one's also quite surprising. The Americas. I used to work in the reseller channel and I, in EMEA. I'll get onto that. Uh, and I always thought Americas was the dominant geography. That's North America, South America, all the surrounding territories, the likes of, uh, you know, the Dominican Republic, all the, all the surrounding islands. I always thought that was, ma because North America is just f***ing huge. It really is. But that's 484 million. EMEA, which is oh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So North, uh, North Africa, South Africa, the UK, down to France, Spain, across East Europe, G Germany, you know, Romania, up to the Nordics, uh, Scandinavia, all, all of Europe. 449 million. I was really surprised, very, very surprised that EMEA is almost level with uh, with the Americas on revenue. Really surprised. Now, if someone from Autodesk who is more, who was paying attention more to geography than I was at school, could probably say, well, actually, in terms of landmass and you know, they were about the same. I don't, I don't know, right? But I was just, my perception was the Americas was just a far bigger uh, geography in terms of what the sales potential. That's not that simple. I know businesses and well, I, I, whatever. It's just my perception. APAC though, killing it. Absolutely killing it. 237 million for APAC. 
So that's Asia and Pacific. So that's Australia, New Zealand. Uh, they'll have been hit with a lot of sanctions. That's probably why there's, they're only up 10%. I think, I'm just guessing, I think Asia Pacific includes Russia, China, and a lot of those sort of regions that are maybe under sanctions. It goes across to the likes of India, Singapore, uh, Japan, those sort of Asian regions, and then, yeah, down to Australia and New Zealand. But I think APAC included Russia, I think, and they've been sanctioned. Orders don't operate in Russia anymore. That's maybe why they're only up 10% and revenue may be down. But still killing it, absolutely killing it for APAC. So, yeah, I found that quite interesting. So, Q1 update. So, these are points to the shareholders that Autodesk like to, to make. And I'm not going to cover them all, but there's a couple of interesting ones in here. So, the first one is under accelerating digitization in AEC. So, Autodesk have signed the second largest EBA ever, which is an enterprise and business agreement with an infrastructure company, who will re rename Nameless, that expanded to include Innovise. Innovise is, I think that's Autodesk's water technology, water infrastructure thing that they acquired a couple of years ago. I was one that was not their biggest acquisition at the time. It was like a billion dollar acquisition. But it's the water infrastructure tool and Autodesk build for the first time. So they've signed a massive EBA, the second largest one ever, with an infrastructure company to put Innovise and build in. Which is which is actually quite significant. Innovise should by this point, given the size of the acquisition, be quite matured. But Autodesk build don't know how matured that is at this point. So putting that into a huge infrastructure company on an EBA of that size, that may get Autodesk build matured to a point where they are iron, they iron out all the niggles, all the, the, the daft things that Autodesk have generally sometimes with their early cloud solutions, just restrictions, limitations that real users in large companies need to get their hands on to tell Autodesk, look, it's not doing this. It needs to do this, right? You maybe didn't think about it, but we need it to do this. Really? Y yes, it needs to do this, right? Those sort of things. So getting a large infrastructure company into build might get it mainstream ready quite quickly. So that's probably a good thing. Uh, yeah, uh, ODS Construction Cloud report is best ever new business growth quarter with growing contract size and renewal rates. So and not to the shareholders that construction clouds growing quickly which is good news for uh, the cloud services. Uh, Fusion 360 under converging design and make in manufacturing. So Fusion 360 total subscriptions increased to 198,000. So this is disclosing Fusion 360 subscription numbers. I assume this is the commercial subscriptions. That that's There's no indication here as to obviously whether these are people paying full price or, you know, how many people are on the grandfathered, you know, legacy subscription plans and how many people are on discounts and whatnot. But 198,000 paid subscriptions, Fusion 360, with strong demand for machining, generative design, and nesting, fabrication, and extension. So doing some rough napkin math, 198,000 subscriptions to Fusion 360. That would be about roughly 15 to $18 million a quarter. Roughly, that that's if that that's if everyone was paying roughly full price. Uh, that's a rough nap, napkin math. So about eighteen. So that's Fusion contributing about eighteen to fifteen million out of that two hundred twenty-five million. It, it probably doesn't work out exactly that. There'll be a lot of people on discounts, right? But that's roughly where Fusion fits within that two hundred twenty-five million. But having said that, that's that's strong. You know, they're almost hitting the two hundred two hundred thousand mark. Uh, but I would imagine that a lot of people are going to be wanting Fusion to, to contribute a lot more to that slice of the pie, uh, unless they've got bigger plans for it moving forwards. Uh, so yeah, I think that's I think I think that's probably about it. The outlook. This is just future stuff. Uh, uh, just yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's the current state of Autodesk. 1.17 billion revenue in the Q1 and the breakdown of products. I found I find that quite interesting. I really do. Uh, if, if you do, let me know what your thoughts down below. I know there's probably going to be a lot of people just complaining about the prices. I, uh, I'm not going to... You, you can if you want. I'm not going to engage. Uh, but, yeah. Well, what do you think of the breakdown of AutoCAD? I'm very curious. To, if anyone's got any insights as to how AutoCAD is still gaining in popularity that much, I know it still has a place. I know. But how that, how is it gaining 21% year on year? How? 
Uh, if you've got any insights, let me know. But yeah, I think that's, uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, my name is Neil Cross. If you want to see more stuff like this, uh, if you want to join the Autodesk bandwagon and you want to subscribe to a license, mate, you can use my link in the description. That'll take you over to the Autodesk store and at no cost to you. After you've clicked that link and you subscribe to a license, I'll get a kickback from Autodesk as a thank you for sending you their way and uh, supports the channel and keeps me going. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D and I'll see you in the next one.